Hello. Hey. Happy anniversary, darling. Oh yeah. yeah. Guess what today is? It's our dating anniversary. Because <laughs> after you're you know married, we were almost married for five years, but we still like because the dating anniversary for us it's April first. Easy to remember. April Fool's Day. Yeah, April Fool's Day. So mm-hmm. happy eighth anniversary. Thank you. That's Marcus Parks. That's Carolina Hidalgo. She's my wife. Yes. And I'm her husband. That's good. That's good. <laughs> anniversary's over now. It's over now. <laughs> I'm trying to clarify it for every yeah, anniversary's over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have to worry about yeah. that. Oh, thank you very much. Congrats on Princess Frankenstein. Thank you thank so you, much, everybody. Thank you, Frankenstein. Depends colloquially, of course. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, we have a new uh, a member of the family, mm-hmm. a new little big pup named Princess Frankenstein. Uh, princess is a title, though, so it's really Frankenstein yeah. and or Frankie. And uh, she's very cute. She's from Tijuana. And yes, she does speak Spanish. She actually does. I was very surprised. Yeah. Siéntate. She Siéntate. Quédate goes right down. All those things. Yeah, yeah. She knows all the commands. That, like, we can have a conversation. <laughs> it's very strange. Well, we got to see an incredible show on Friday night. Yes. Yes. We went and yes. saw a musical, which, you know us, we're not big musical people we've got like we, we, well i mean we've got our musicals that we enjoy our yeah. little shop of horrors yes our rocky horror picture shows book of mormon was cool book of mormon was incredible yeah. phantom of the opera we also enjoy so i guess we like a few we, we went like and saw lot. drag the musical yes which was fucking incredible our friend ashley gordon did all the music the music is not musical music but it's got a hint of musical music in there it definitely does yeah but it's like it was like there was an actual live rock band that played the score uh it's a wonderful story it's funny as hell anytime you have a chance to see it if they bring it back we they saw like, the, the last show, weekend yeah. i think they only did two weekends but this show's gonna be they sold out every fucking performance this show's gonna be a hit it was so good Were i was we, very very impressed did you have a favorite song i no. I, I like them all. I, I my, don't remember the names of anything. We were drunk and we were like practically on stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were. Yeah, because it star, co-stars uh, Alaska Thunderfuck from season five of Drag Race. Mm-hmm. Yeah, season five. five. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, season five. Uh, and wow, man, talk about like somebody because in season five on Drag Race, they're like they're pretty good. Like like she's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, like you could tell, still trying to learn to now. Star could sing. Everyone could sing. There was a new kids on uh, one. Uh, one of the kids on the block. He was there. Joey McIntyre. And they could all sing. They were doing a great job. It was really fun. It was like the the songs. Everything. I don't remember very much because remember that was like my first night out in a long time. Yeah. And so, but all <laughs> I remember was just you know this and yeah. like smiling the whole time. So yes, great job. And I hope they come back. I know they're doing New York, so I hope they come back. We'd watch them again. This time a little more sober. Yeah. Yeah, more sober. Yeah. Uh, but I think the uh, you can listen to the original, uh, you can listen to the recording. They've recorded like a full album mm-hmm. uh, that you can listen to on like either Spotify or Drag the Musical, like search oh, for their yeah. website. Okay. They're like Ginger yeah. Minj from ep- uh, from season seven sings on that one. <laughs> yeah. And I think the, the catchiest song for me was It's So Pretty. Oh, okay, I don't yeah. remember that part. That was the one where the the boy is talking about like all the different uh, oh, pieces of clothing. Oh yeah, that after he wears. I got the French fries. Yeah, that was a really <laughs> good part. The boy did a great job yeah. in that. Yeah, yeah, boy was incredible. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bangarang Nero, ever hear of Hamilton? I did. We watched. We Hamilton. watched Hamilton. Yeah. Fell asleep. I, you know, it's not that good. I was tired. I'm sorry, but it's just not that good. Okay, <laughs> we feel bad. We feel bad. I'm, I'm sure it is good. Like yeah. it is objectively good. If like the rest of the world except us, mm-hmm. like kind of like you too. Um, uh, I fell asleep. Yes. Yeah. But I don't know. So I guess I am. I'm not always a musical person. Not always. No, not always. Not um, always. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got some fun videos for today. That's yes. what this show is. We answer your questions. Talk to us on chat. If you're watching us on YouTube right now, go over to twitch.tv uh, slash last podcast network. Uh, and you can interact with us on the chat directly. Panic but Bouton says, love your shirt, Marcus. Thank you very much. Got it at a store here called Wasteland. Mm. Um, you can interact with us directly. Uh, there are many buffers. There are many, many buffers. But so you can like, still ask us almost anything. <laughs> Please do. Oh, and Uncle Sherry says we've started watching Drag Race because you guys are loving it. 
It's fantastic. I'm isn't glad it? you enjoy isn't it. it. Really, really good. Yeah, uh, and we're also going to be uh, playing some videos. And halfway through the show, we got the vinyl haul, and we got a very eclectic vinyl haul this week. I like it. Yeah. I really do because you've been playing records uh, again lately. Mm -hmm. So I like what you have going on right now. Yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying what I'm uh, mm -hmm. what I'm DJing in the house. <laughs> it's nice. I know. I can't watch Sister Wives. <laughs> Boycott Sister Wives. Everyone, cancel hashtag Yes Sister Wives. No more. No more. What happened? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Was this today? No, no. This has been going on for a while, oh. Cody. Oh, Cody. Yeah. Mm. That anyway, guy. Anyway, we play records now. <laughs> and it's fantastic. And we go to musicals. And when we have dogs or Mexican, like, we're all whole new people now. We're new people now. This is great. Oh, Penny Lane says, I'm expecting Foley records for April Fool's. God damn it. I wish I would have thought about that. I had all kind. I have all kinds of incredible Foley records. What are records. Foley records? Like sound records. You know, like, you know, the Halloween sounds. Like, oh. <laughs> You know, Foley records. That's cool. It's just all sound. Yeah, I've got one record that's just nothing but jet engine noises. Yes, I know uh, that one. I've got one record that's just heartbeats because it's for doctors. I that got one, one freaks me out. I got one that teaches you how to land a single engine plane specifically at Burbank Airport. It's like a book. Yeah, it's yeah. like a book. It's, it's an audio book. Yeah, and it's done in like the 1960s, so it's got that great like voice like, make sure before you do your first approach that your propeller is in its upright position. And then it has sound effects or like when it's storming and tells you what be to do. It'd be really fun for the guy trying to put it on the record and he's just <laughs> trying to take the thing through the clouds one more time, but it keeps skipping. Why didn't I bring an extra DJ on this trip? <laughs> Well, let's well, start with our first video. Okay. Let's yeah. start with the first video because lately we've been getting a lot into experimental music and mm -hmm. we've been getting into like the early days of like tape splicing and recording and engineering and like the ways that people really used to do music way back in the day. Yeah. But how we do music now is, of course, we do everything digitally. But I would like to show you. Oh, great. A man. This is a man who. In <laughs> I, let me guess already. <laughs> this is a man. With a, a bit of hair, let's say, <laughs> uh, and, and uh, the, let me guess, uh, Polo tucked in and uh, it's going to explain something to me. <laughs> he's going to explain something to me direct, isn't he? He's not going to explain something. He's going to demonstrate something and he's going to do thing. it with so much, not demonstrating and explaining are two very different things. <laughs> 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 but he's going to do it with so much gusto. Okay. That I think you're going to enjoy it. Okay, let's see how right I am. Middle age, about 35. Let's okay. go. 30. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, ha I had the shirt wrong. But every oh, oh, what is he doing? He'll explain. Oh, he's demonstrating no, right no, now, and then no. he'll explain. Okay. Okay, let's listen back to this. Okay, because you just recorded what you were singing into the mic. Yeah, and we can view this. So along with the, not the MIDI capabilities of a professional sequencer, it also gives you the ability to manipulate and, and there see you are. digital uh -huh. audio. Sound wise. So let's yeah. listen to that back. And you can see the bouncing ball, just like the other program. It gives you an idea where the bars and beats are. And there you are. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you're recording right onto the hard what? drive here? That's correct. <gasps> Is that so? What? How long is that video? <laughs> First I think, of all, I think it was a news segment. That was the only clip of it oh, that we could okay. find, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, I think it was part of a longer segment in which a man <laughs> tells you, like, "This is how we're recording music now." Wow! So from the, you just hook up the the microphone to the computer, mm -hmm. and then you do the thing, and then what does his do do da da? Where does that end up? D uh, it stays there. That's because oh. that's all he's demonstrating is do 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 do. Oh oh da da da. I really wish we had David Bowie was like right behind him. <laughs> that would have made the demonstration so much better. It's like why don't we get somebody? <laughs> but yeah, no, that's technology, right? Was that like? Like the eighties? I think that was probably late eighties, early nineties. Yeah, early nineties. Okay, yeah. I can see that. But it's always later. Sometimes it's later than you think because video looked like shit up until like two thousand and four. Yeah, like it could have been like two thousand three. It might have been. But that was still twenty <laughs> years ago. That's still forever ago. Oh, first time chat. V P A Poth. First LP in live. Hell y'all. Hell you. Thank you so much Let's for tuning it. in. I'm just gonna salute you. And Johnny uh, Blank. You all know music so well, so this question will be tough. 
what y'all's favorite band? Oh, yes, that one. That one's hard. That one's hard because I, I know it, it depends when you ask me. Yeah, it really yeah. it, it should. That's the thing about music yeah. taste is that music taste should change as you get older. It should change throughout your life depending on where you are. What your fat like I've got like a rotating cast of like five. Well, uh, okay, what was the question? What, what's your favorite fav- band of all time or just favorite band? Just favorite band. Okay, that's different. Yes. So what's yours first? Uh, I mean, mine's Ween. Um, yeah. 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 I mean, that's yeah. But Ween's, Ween's my favorite band, just as a whole, you know. But I'm also a massive, uh, you know, Suicide fan, mm-hmm. uh, massive Radiohead fan. Mm-hmm. You know, I got. I know that's not the coolest thing to say, but I am. Oh, a that's cool. Massive, massive Radiohead fan. Uh, Brian Eno, huge into Brian Eno. He's Bowie, good. You know. Bowie's good. Yeah. Nirvana, I'm a huge Nirvana fan. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, right. actually, my favorite bands are like sort of basic, but you know, it's like, what the fuck? I mean, what do you expect me <laughs> to say, Carl Heinz Stockhausen? I, like, no. <laughs> like no. this, like this mortal coil. Like, I'm not gonna go like super deep on that. Yeah. My favorite band, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was stuck on Link Ray for a long time, but then I listened to it too much. Yeah. And then and then I had to I had to put it away. You listened to nothing but Link Ray for like two years. It was a lot. Yeah. And then I got into video game soundtracks, and that was a lot. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I just when I do something, I do it obsessively, yeah. as you probably know. So I uh, at the moment now, I I don't know. Favorite band of all time then. Favorite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one. <laughs> you don't have one, and, I, and that's yeah. absolutely fine. I don't you don't know. have Beastie to Boys, have a, probably. Yeah. yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Since I was a kid. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with that one. I think it's a good answer, yeah. and I, and that rings true. Mm-hmm. Let's mm-hmm. see another video, and this is gonna stay kind of in the same realm okay. as recording software. This is like nerds. This is like absolute like audio nerds. Are they demonstrating something? He is talking about his setup. Okay. His, he is, is. He's talking about his setup because you give me a lot of shit for my audio. Se- you give me a lot of shit for my stereo setup, no. which is meticulously put together. I don't give you shit for that. I think it's fantastic. It's very no. It's very very impressive and how weird it is. Yes. You I, had choice words to say about how much I spent on a record needle the other day. Well, that was insane. <laughs> <laughs> the, I, I can't even tell you how much money. It was just so much money that I was just like, wow, I wouldn't even, I, I don't know what to. I, the, Everyone's got I, their thing. I guess. I don't buy fancy cars. I drive a Subaru. We don't have kids. I spend my money on this. Okay. But That's this totally guy fine. is absolutely insane. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, this guy is, because he also, I remember when I told you how much my uh, power strip cost. That also was a. Really face. had to just you know order the no more ordering it basically <laughs> we just had to make food at home for the next six months and then and then we have a court which is great <laughs> this is really fun that we can look at and eat or whatever you know. it's nice this guy goes far beyond that uh, Kale Morita likes to listen to music but on his own terms the music fan spends thousands of dollars on high-end stereo equipment all in a quest for audio perfection But Marita, nicknamed Rock Grandpa by the clerks at his favorite vinyl record shop in Tokyo, has taken his hobby even further. The 82-year-old retired lawyer has installed a 40-foot utility pole in his front yard that he connected to the power grid so he can have a personal source of pure electricity. Wait, wait, what? Marita says that having your own power source eliminates electrical interference that comes from sharing a public utility pole. Marita passed away in 2014 (laughs) due to electrical interference. (laughs) Mm-hmm. So Yep, that's why I spent so much money on that power strip. Okay. Because <laughs> if the blood is bad, the uh-huh. body gets sick. Yeah. And what's the point of having all this nice equipment if all of the electricity that comes into it is bad? <laughs> Remember when we were in uh when we lived in Brooklyn and I kept getting all that interference all the time because we lived in a building that was 150 years old? Uh huh. What Don't does that have that to do with anymore. music? Let's talk about music. <laughs> talking about the music. Oh, the audiophile the, the stuff. Audiophile style yeah. of music. Yeah. Yeah, I've never been one of those people. I know you are, and I know there's lots of people who who do that. That's like their job, and they're amazing. Of can who we're working on right now are they are totally into that. But to me, I can enjoy anything anywhere. Yeah. I'm not. 
I don't know. I can't tell the changes. I don't know. You can because you you talk all the time about how much worse the sound quality is on Spotify as compared to like YouTube and Apple Music. That's true. Yeah. You, that you're is a true. digital audiophile. That's what you get big on. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess. I'm like, man, I can't. This Slater Kinney song won't play well. You know, and that's it. That's that's my biggest problem. Yeah. Ooh, first time chat. T more 32. Thank you for uh, joining us. Are you fans of the band Cardiacs? Yes. Oh. And uh, Claw Beat Skin says, going to keep bumping this. Marcus, you said in Vancouver in June of 2022 that your next season of No Dogs would be country, starting with Merle Haggard. What happened? <laughs> we changed our mind. We changed our <laughs> We were going to do it. We ran uh, COVID. Yeah. COVID. Yeah. COVID. Long yeah. COVID. Yeah, I, had lo- I got long COVID, and that like set us back. We yeah. were gonna do a whole Riot Girl season too. Uh-huh. Um, that year, just just COVID. COVID. Yeah, a long lot COVID. of things. Yeah. yeah, long COVID fucked us up uh, pretty bad. Yeah, a couple of years there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but we're getting back to it. That's we the are. Thing. We are getting back to it. Hey, a- a- good and- news for everyone. We just recorded the first episode of our Can series last Wednesday. Yes, and we promise we might not re-record it. Uh, <laughs> that has happened before but no we will get a lot of ep- we're going to get a lot of these episodes in the can and then we're going to release them probably after the break or something like that it's going to be really good and uh, and and then we're going to we're going to roll out some more announcements more no dog stuff is going to happen as soon as that comes out like kraut rock stuff comes out we're mm-hmm. actually going to make some fun announcements but we should save that for later yeah in case you know something else happens <laughs> I know. more COVID. we've got who knows we got plans let's just say that we got yes. plans and uh, we're not going to yes. make announcements yet but we got plans you want to watch in the video yes i do i do okay, uh, okay but is um th- more demonstrating um, more demonstrating. Let me see if oh, I can. <laughs> can we get a new list? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're not going to do new demonstrating. Actually, we're going to do a uh, a segment okay. that you actually started that I I want to borrow for a second. Okay, okay, yeah. Actually, good music. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. This comes from an unlikely source. This comes from a commercial that I you know I follow a couple of nostalgia like Instagram accounts yeah. and this commer- and this came on and it just popped a fucking memory bulb in my head but then I listened to it like this is an actually good alternative rock song well not alternative not alternative rock but just like dreamy alternative pop okay let's see it all right <laughs> What is this? Oh, oh, it's a chocolate bar? You know what I mean. Oh, that's good. I don't even know the words, but I know the words. That's delightful. <laughs> That's nice. Isn't Is that like a real commercial? That was a real commercial. Yeah, you lived in Mexico during the time that that commercial yeah. was really big. I think that big was, James, what, like 90, what would you say, 94, 95? Thereabouts. Yeah, 94, okay. 95. Wow. That commercial was like on all yeah, the time on MTV. I love it. Yeah, it's played constantly on MTV. And every time it came on, it was like, chocolatey, chewy, what you call it? <laughs> it was just always fun to see. The art's great. Yeah, I, I would actually like to. I don't know. I wish I kind of. I wish I would have looked it up before the show to see who actually did that song. Maybe it was somebody like you know, Lush. Oh, who's Lush? They're an alternative band. Okay, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I can't. I, you know what? There was an idea in my head, and then I had it, and it was gone. And mm. then what you call it? Now in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever real song yeah. has been replaced by that jingle. So what good job. Call it? <laughs> it's great. And is it good? Is it a good candy bar? Uh, what you call it's pretty good. Yeah, okay. I don't see them around anymore. You don't see the whatchamacallits around so much anymore, do you? That's a thing that I used to see a lot, <laughs> and now I don't see it much. Times are a changing. <laughs> what you call it? <laughs> Okay. Oh, Penny Lane 086. What music do your dogs love the most? Um, uh, uh, Frankie just got really, really just got into uh, Dead Kennedys. Um, yeah. The other day, she really it loved Dead like, Kennedys. It was so insane. It just all of a sudden you started doing that. What's a bass? I was playing the bass line for uh, Holiday in Cambodia. The introduction, like, like and then she's like. And freaked out. Yeah. She was freaking out. She's like, "What is that music?" Yeah. 
and she loved it. Absolutely no so, response to the 30 straight minutes of synthesizer improvisation no that I did. Sorry. Didn't care. No wing. No. But it was that song mm-hmm. that did it to her. So she, it, I don't know. There was something about it that she loved it. So yes, our dogs do like music, and Georgie judges us, does this the eye roll, you know, side eye thing mm-hmm. uh, whenever we play Guns N' Roses. Doesn't like it. Doesn't like Guns N' Roses no. at all. You know what she prefers? She really likes the Eraserhead soundtrack. Yes, we have really mentioned this. It. She enjoys a lot of like soundtrack kind of music, atmospheric noise. Yes, yeah, soundscapes. Yeah, she's anything that makes that. you feel nervous. Yeah, but not shoegaze because she's not like that. <laughs> No, she's not. No. Not like that at all. She doesn't like MBV. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> You know, let's go to a music video. We haven't watched a music video just yet. Like a real music a video? A real music video. You're not going to give me a demonstration I or bet. a candy commercial or something? <laughs> no, okay. no demonstration. Okay. No candy okay. commercial. Okay. No explanations. No audiophilia. Okay. No. This is a band called Locomia doing their track, Locomia. I've seen this. Yes. <laughs> I their, love this idea. Their style is incredible. It's like Klaus Nomi mixed with Matadors mixed with elf shoes. Well, of course, those are those. Uh, this song fucking goes hard, too. Ooh, yes. Loco Mia, also known as Loco Mia. It's two words or one word. Mm-hmm. I think they're from Spain. They're from Spain. Yeah, I can see that. Disco Ibiza, loco mia. Moda Ibiza, loco mia. Loco Ibiza, loco mia. Sexy Ibiza, loco mia. Mar Ibiza, loco mia. Sol Ibiza, loco mia. Marcha Ibiza, right. loco mia. Crazy Ibiza, <laughs> loco mia. I mean, it's loco similar to... Get your body groove and get up on the groove. Get into the mood. I mean, it's got a lot going for it. It's, it's got a, what is it, Technotronics thing going on? Okay. Yeah, it's definitely got a Technotronics thing. Yeah. But it's also a little bit of Rico Suave yes. at the same time. I was going to say exactly that. <laughs> Especially with this guy. It does say the fan twirling was an important part of their stage performance and their music video, so this is part of their thing. They didn't just do this for this performance. Uh, no. You'll notice Loco Mia is printed Ooh. on the fans. Yes. Wow. <laughs> and we're not sure why they're doing this. I think they just like it. Look they, at that. The men, they know how to do it. Look at that guy in the yeah. red. He's the fan master. This is when, like, you remember Space Glam went a weird direction to pirates? Yeah. Rock music? Yeah. And then and then it went to fans, <laughs> I think. It made, like, I, it digressed from one thing to another thing. And, uh. Yeah. Matadors. Yeah. Glam Matador. No one, no one's really. It's very, you know. No one's really explored that. It's Matador glam. It is a bit, but with the fans, that's a very Spaniard, uh, like flamenco dances, I think. Valencianas. I remember we had to do the Valencianas in school, um, which is a lot. I don't remember, but I think we had fans. That's weird. Yeah, but not that big. All right. That's lo- I mean, you get yeah, you yeah, get the we, gist of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Doesn't really it, like grow it, from there. It, there's no <laughs> <laughs> break beat after that. Um, yeah. Loco mia. Does that mean like I'm crazy or my crazy? You see, the thing is, it can go either way. Loco mia could be like my crazy, my my, cr- my craziness, uh-huh. or loco mia, you're my crazy. Like it, it really. It, uh, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, it could be a lot of things, I guess, yeah. is what they do with band names, right? Yeah. It could be a lot of things. Yeah, it could be a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is actually good. This is from uh, Mac the Great. Uh, <laughs> favorite movie soundtrack. Ooh, yeah, we, we had a list. We put out a list but a little while ago. On, yeah, we did. And I remember we had some really good ones, and I had some great ones. Like, I, I remember uh, Repo Man was mm-hmm. on my list, of course. Return of the Living Dead was yes, a great one. Yes, that was good. Uh, uh, Judgment Night. Oh, Judgment, Ju- that was yours. Judgment Night was my number one. Uh, what was that? Pretty in Pink. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I found that record on a stairwell. It was one of those free ones, and it sounds perfect. Yeah. Uh, I, I, so, yes, we have a lot, and those are the ones I remember. And, of course, I love Ennio Morricone, and I play a lot of him, like, yeah. all the time, to the point where now I can't play as much. 
because then I lose. It sucks. <laughs> it sucks that I have to listen to music like ten hours a day. Uh, but yeah, so Ennio Morricone, all that stuff, love it. Love all of it. Wow, Okami Canuck said that as a Spaniard, they got to see local. They got to see that performance live on TV as a child. Wow. That's incredible. C- the cocaine is a hell of a drug, they said. <laughs> I, as a child, cocaine is, it was, it must be tough on the system. But, yeah, no, I mean, that's crazy. I'm sure they had a great time. <laughs> no, I'm sure you did. I'm sure my local me was yeah. great. All right, it's 630. That means it's time for Vinyl Hall. Oh, good. This is my favorite part. Oh, yeah. We got some cool ones up mm-hmm. this week. This is, like I said, this is eclectic. This is just stuff that I've picked up in the last, like, Two or three weeks. Yeah. Uh, before we get to the vinyl hall, though, thank you for the subs. Brownie Baker 72, The Modern Bard, The Modern Bard, Slug Bucket, and mm-hmm. Mr. Shanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, this first one. That- yeah. <laughs> this, I picked this up at Freak Beat Records over on Ventura, over in the valley. Uh, this is a Nuggets pop, pop compilation called Come to the Sunshine. Soft pop, soft pop nuggets from the WEA vaults. Like Nuggets, of course, as we know, we're big on bringing garage rock back, you know, but saving a lot of garage rock bands yes. from um, obscurity uh, and then just doing a ton of releases after that. Right. It, yeah. It started with Lenny K, who we know from the Patti Smith group. And Lenny K started the first uh, Nuggets. Uh, I believe he did it or Jack Holtzman asked him to or mm, something Jack like Jack Holtzman asked him to, yeah. Yeah, from Electra, the, the guy who ran Electra uh, Records. Uh, and uh, so, so so he put together this thing of like their little nuggets of like cool, op- obscure music that were maybe a hit regionally or maybe a hit for just a minute. Uh, and, but back in the day, you know, you play your song on the radio, that song is over and done with, and then you never hear back again about it again. So these compilations became really, really important during that period, you know, during the 70s, the 80s, and 90s, until now you go online and you can find it anywhere. But still, Nuggets is still really cool. I, I think this one, uh, the Come to the Sunshine, came out in 2004 because mm-hmm. Rhino Records continued this Nuggets and like it just keeps going and going. And this is, I think, uh, for uh, Warner Brothers. That's why they say WEA. Mm-hmm. So um, they have some like, so it is what you think it is. It's very come to the sunshine with lollipops and pigtails. Um, but there it, is actually one song called Silver and Sunshine. It's great. I would, you see, I didn't even know. But one of the things that I love about this is the packaging is that if you put the record in the right place. What? The sun rises. Wait, no, wait, come back to wait. us. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> the sun rises. If you put the record right there, oh. it's really nice. See? Yeah. That come is nice. To the sunshine. Good job. Yeah, and you could also put... Like this one, like it's also got this really <laughs> fun. Look at that. That's fun too. That's cool. Yeah, that's, very that's cool. really cool. But yeah, uh, and it's got, of course, like you know, extensive liner notes, uh, and just all of these bands just did absolutely nothing and everything all at the same time. <laughs> like they're just like people that used it. Like they were like, you know, it was like some of the bands in the '60s, like you know, Monkey. Have, have you ever heard the album Head by the Monkeys? Uh, I've heard of it. Yeah, in the early at uh, mid two thousands, like you know, people but would it became very hip to say like, you know, there's like a psychedelic monkeys record, and it's actually pretty good. Really? It, it's it's fine. It, it's okay. James Head, you listen to it? I've listened to it. it it's, monkeys. it's monkeys. It's monkeys. It's fine. It's the it's monkeys good. trying to do psychedelic rock. It's fine. But nowhere near as good as some of these bands that are on this compilation. Let's check out the first one. This one is very much, I mean, that's the thing, is that these songs, these are cash-in songs. Like, these are definitely people, it's not uh, sincere in any way whatsoever. Oh, okay, so there's like writing songs to, <laughs> like, like uh, Lou Reed at Picton kind yeah. of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it's sort of like, uh, remember the Strange Loves? We talked about them uh, in our Nugget series where yes. they just like put a bunch of like studio guys together and like, you know, let's write a, you know, a hit, a, a beat hit at the time. And this is such a 1960s cash-in. It's by a band called The Morning Glories <laughs> and the uh, song is called Love In. Let's listen. This isn't an official music video, this guy. Oh, As you can see, Ron Rare's 1960s pop music does custom edited trick. Oh! And you see such a fine display of Paisley fantasy, <laughs> just like Piccadilly Square. 
try to find your shades, weave your braids, paint a flower on you, come along with me, wow. and we'll go directly there. Just before we go, you should know what's expected of you, lying on the grass, we can talk to the trees. We can talk Hello, to the trees. make it seem like a a little bit on the nose. <laughs> slowly, let me show you if you go, I'll take you. Knows is the point. It's a cat cat. Let me show you. Yeah, but it's oh wow. <laughs> I mean, it's a great song. These guys knew their craft, you know. Yeah, it's described in the liner notes as a better, th- much better than it should be cash out. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I do. It's not my style. I like the pop pa pa again. It's, That's good. Here's an interesting trivia. Two of the guys that were in this uh, band, they later went on uh, to form the group Bread. Yes. That's true, actually. James Griffin and uh, Rob Roy- Royer. Mm-hmm. They, um, yes. They joined, they, they founded Bread. <laughs> like right after this. Yeah, the, they put on the writing credits TX Farthingsworth the 14th. That's Rob's name. <laughs> yep. All right. All right. That's yes, the that's, love that's good. That's, that's good. The love that's the yep. that's, as, uh, that's as long as it's old cold. <laughs> and this other one, I actually just really like this song. It's another kind of cash in. It's by The Looking Glass. It's called Silver and Sunshine. Okay. Set, by the way. Is this xylophone? Yeah. Silver and sunshine. That's what our love is. I don't know what California is on to. This is how I drive in the world. Silver and sunshine. That's what our love That's where I go at night. When you're asleep. Dark and angry times. I like but you that. Know what shines through? What shines through? Silver and Wow. Okay, fine. <laughs> when you're married, you just have to. I was listening to Peter Gundry all week, and now I have to do this. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. I wonder if they can start getting to the. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That was great. That was fantastic. That, the co- Nuggets! Cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this next uh, record actually does stay in the same area. It's like the same, or the same era. Okay. Uh, except it is a cover mm-hmm. record that our friend Mort Garson just decided to do because he liked this musical. He did a full cover of Hair and called it Electronic Hair Pieces. Oh, wow. That Is that lo- him? <laughs> no, Mort Garson was a man who looks like his name is Mort Garson. Um, this right here, this is uh, covers that he did all on the Moog synthesizer. Uh, his big thing was, you know, Plantasia was what he's best known for. He also did Black Mass for Lucifer, uh, all kinds of weird, Abraxas, weird, crazy shit. Mm-hmm. Um, we but, were talking about this over Easter dinner yesterday, so this is probably why you brought this out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was in my head. Uh, but he actually does a very cool job with, you know, a... a a musical, what do you think of hair? I don't know hair. You know, hair, hair, beautiful I, hair. I do, I think I have to find out more Let about hair. Let the sun shine. That song? Uh, you know? I, this I, is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. I, yeah, you know, I, I don't, like, hang out in your circles. <laughs> Uh, these are extraordinarily well. Okay, the, these are like all, these are songs you if you grew up in America, era, yeah, different place, different place. Yeah. Um, so that's unfortunate. Oh, that's, that's more Mort Garson. Yeah, that is <laughs> actually that is the only man I want to see, demonstrate. 
<laughs> all day. <laughs> Show my husband how to demonstrate. Is he still with us? More, no, unfortunately, oh, more passed sorry. on a few years ago. But well. yeah, let's hear a little bit of uh, electronic hair pieces. This okay, cool. shit is incredible. This is his version of Let the Sun Shine On. Okay. And this is from the musical hair. Yeah. 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 Mm. Huh. That's interesting. I didn't know the subtitle for Let the Sun Shine In is uh, The Flesh Failures. Huh. Yeah, right? The Flesh Failures. Huh. I'll take a look at this back cover, too. Let's get over on the back end. There's your morning. <gasps> That's pretty. I like that. Okay. Yeah. Check. Check out this fucking record. Let it seep in. Really. Just let yourself fall okay. into the world. Sure. No, right. I like I'm impressed. That's it is good. very impressive. Yeah, that's good on more. That's good on more. It, no, it's cool shit. It is very impressive. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm trying is. to do when I'm locked away with all my synthesizers. Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah. That's it's totally a, fine. I feel like I'm a good 10 years, maybe 15 away from that. You never know. And you get to hear me working on it in the meantime. I have no problem with that. That's great. It's when I like, I love I, ambient, whatever. You're playing something, you're making something, you're, you're hammering something to put together to make something. I, I, none of that ever bothers me at all. It's when, when you put stuff in my ears <laughs> and then you look at me for my reaction and say, now show me that you are enjoying this. And I'm just like, <laughs> what do I do? I understand. That's the only time. I stopped doing that because I could tell it was uncomfortable for you <laughs> and for me. What am I supposed to do? Are you going to take out a guitar and sing to me? <laughs> I don't know. No, but I, I, I find it really cool, though. Thank it is you. Fantastic. I, pre- I, appreciate your, mm-hmm. I appreciate your support in Abs- my, mus- yes. my amateur musical yes. endeavors. Yes, and I think you should keep going because you, you only get better. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, the Modern Bar says, just want to say I had a fantastic time listening to the Terry Riley album from the last hall while oh. coming down off mushrooms. Oh, that's nice. The, I, I assume you heard the whole thing, beginning and end, because that's a very, very important part. Yeah, you have to listen to the whole thing. You have to sit down. You have to have block 40 minutes out of your day <laughs> for that tw- the Persian dervishes. Or you can do five minutes if you really, really want to, but I think you should do the whole thing. Yeah. Believe mm-hmm. me, because by the end of it, it's that thing where at first you're, this is nice, and then, you, then there's frustration, mm-hmm. and then and I want to go, and then why am I stuck here? And then at the end of it, you're like, that was a wonderful journey. Yeah. And that's what you got to do. That's what it is with mm-hmm. these people. Uh, Rob Moth ask, asks, is California better for the vinyl finds, or was New York better? Not even a contest. New York City. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I have to say, un- unfortunately, that is one of the things that I miss. Like, just in, in our neighborhood in uh, Greenpoint, there were three record stores within, walk- within a 10-minute walk that are better than uh, a lot of what I found here. It's, you know, what happens is that maybe like not enough people are dying here because that's what happens at record <laughs> in stores York, in New York yeah. all the time. I mean, you're like, why are there like 20 Otis Redding albums and compilations? Oh, it's because a huge fan passed away and mm-hmm. their you know, great niece or whatever went to the record store. And sold. So that's, the, that's why. Yeah. California, you're staying alive too long, yeah. or you're bequeathing them <laughs> to an heir. Exactly, yeah. New York, people die alone all the time. Yeah. And it just gets fucking... Yeah, the niece puts it straight to Academy. <laughs> Although, I still haven't been to Permanent Records Roadhouse. I hear that's the great one to go to here. I still haven't been. been planning to go. All right, we'll make a trip. Yeah, I will we'll definitely make a trip. All right, for this last record on the vinyl hall, hall this is, I mean, I felt really I'm dumb. I'm excited for this one. I felt really dumb because when I ordered it off of Discar- Discogs, I was like, Gazars? <laughs> that's a funny name <laughs> for an album. Uh, and then I realized after listening to it, it's uh, Gisa- it's, it's Gisa- his name. Gisa- <laughs> <laughs> it's pronounced Gisars, right? Uh, his name is Tito. 
Tito Quizars, right? Yes. Yes. Am I saying that right? I, I believe you are saying that right. I, I mean, I just found out about him. I, I had to uh, text my parents. It's <laughs> Guisar, by the Guisar. way. Yeah, because yeah. there's uh, well, the reason why they call it Guisar is because they're they're calling it the singing Guisar. So because there's two of them. It's a, uh, it's uh, Tito with his daughter. Yeah. And and they're singing, you know, for this record. And I really wish that I could find. I couldn't find anywhere online anything from this album. Like actually, no one's ever uploaded anything, which is actually kind of rare. That you can't find anything specifically maybe from we this can album do it. online. Yeah, maybe we could do it because I yeah. fucking adore this album. It's so fucking good. Uh, it's a lot of like mariachi stuff, but it's like it's got a modern feel to it. It's got some mambo. It's got some cool shit to it. Um, but it's also got some really catchy like you know duets between you know I didn't know when I was listening to it that it was father and daughter, um, but the way their voices interplay with each other is beautiful. But we were able to find something from. Uh, Layla, is it Layla? Is that her name? Uh, I don't know. Layla. Layla, yeah, from Layla. Oh, Layla, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's play that one first, and then you've got, after we do that, you've got one that you wanted to show. I, yeah, I have a song I gotta show. You got anything else you want to say about these people? The Gizas? Dulce Amor Mio. I'll tell you. After this. Just wait until Tarantino comes back from retirement after making his movie critic movie. When he makes his Mexico movie, this song's gonna be in it. Oh, good. I'll be in it too. I have to be in it. Y tus caricias, mi sufrimiento, acallaré. Oh, I like this. This is like 50s, 60s, 60s. Cuando se quiere de veras. That's Tito. Como te quiero yo a ti. Yeah, a father can yeah, a father can be can sing kissing in the presence of his daughter. The Gainsbury's did it, but then again they're weird. Never again. I apologize. <laughs> No, right, that's very fucking cool. Now let's watch the one that, uh, okay. that you wanted to well, talk about. Okay, first of all, I just real quick, uh, I did check out the uh, the actual album that that we you know before we started and everything because mm-hmm. I wanted to read like what it had to say about them because I didn't know anything about them and, and so what they said was that this was Tito uh, Guisado's like uh, bio it says he was an amateur boxer, a tennis champion, an expert golfer, equestrian. And bullfighter. Jesus. Yes. And then uh, none of that is true. No. Uh, <laughs> good. Good, and good, then, good. And Tito's father, a wealthy rancher in Mexico, wanted Tito to be a doctor. The doctor part is true, yeah. actually. So Tito went to the States to study medicine at Columbia University. I don't know. I don't think that part's true. Yeah. I don't even think he left. I don't even think he even, even enrolled. <laughs> um, but as Tito puts it, a man is born to sing and is useless to try to do anything else. Goddamn right. I love that. Well, from what I could tell from Tito, he seems like like he was an actor. That's what he was. He was an actor yes. who could sing. He made he made it big, I think, in, with Argentinian films, and then eventually made his way to Hollywood. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, yeah, no. So Tito, so you got another song because you actually texted your parents. To I had ask to if they knew who this guy and was, and they're like, of course. Allá en el Rancho Grande, like this is uh, a big one, and I and then when I heard it, I was like, duh, d- d- yes, it's every you you might have heard this song, probably, yeah. But it is like it is one of those really fun, like kind of 1 a.m. parties. You put this on, and if you got at least one or two Mexican friends, they're gonna go crazy, okay? Because it's gonna it's 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 a fun song. It's a drinking song. It's a mariachi song. I'm sure I do know this song. It's a charro song. song. Yeah, That's I've, what they call it. Ah, uh, I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen enough uh, mariachi bands growing up that I probably heard this at least once. If we can play this for you know, I grew up in Mexico, mi patria, sort of. Let's see. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I know that song. Ah, this is the best part. I'm going to make you socks. 
Yeah, we can stop it. It's really good. Just, just Google it. It's fantastic. We've been living in LA like. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're done. We've been living in LA for so long now, for like a, over a year now. We haven't seen one mariachi band. We need to go out and see a mariachi band. They're all over the place. Are they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, yeah, we should funny. go. We yeah, should go. I, I would. Im- I don't know if I was. I'm wrong on that. I, I would imagine there'd be a lot of mariachi bands in Los Angeles. Yes, there has got to There's be. There's got to be. There's got to be. Well, no, we should. We should check it out. I love this stuff. Uh, it's. I mean, that, that's a very popular song. Yeah. A huge. I think that was from even like. I think that started like in the 40s. Like that's a very old, old song that just continues on and on and on. And, and even Elvis did a did a cover. Really? In English. Well, even I though, didn't listen to it. Like, I know Tito uh, Kisar is, um, yeah, I think he got to start, like, he started putting out music, like, on 78s in the 30s. Like, what? that dude's been oh. around for forever. Yeah, yeah, he died. Yeah, he's oh. He died. Yeah. He lived to be, like, 90-something, though. Old, ripe old age, that guy. They always do. Um, and one thing I found that was interesting, I actually looked him up because I'm like, how do I not know this person at all? Uh, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of shit I don't know. Why am I surprised? <laughs> but uh, what I found out, and this is a very Hispanic thing to do uh, with Hispanic people. They're they're always like, did you know that your cousin's mother's uncle was a blah, 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 blah. And always, like, and they're, they're pretty much your cousin, yeah. Carolita. Oh. Okay? You know, always. So I thought this was cool that uh, Jose Maria Guizar, who is the father of uh, Tito, right, the, the singer Tito, uh, he, his father had a, okay, again, Tito's father <laughs> had a cousin okay. named Maria Soledad Reyes Guizar, la mamá de Cantinflas. Okay. So that means she, so they, Tito is kind of, sort of, distant cousins with Canteen Flus. Canteen Flus. Canteen Flus. They're Canteen Flus. Oh, Canteen Flus. Oh, my oh God. yeah. Yeah, the person the, you the got. The funniest man who ever lived. <laughs> By the way, we, we this is my walk- favorite favorite movies growing up. This is us on Friday night walking from the restaurant to the musical, and man, you flipped out when you saw the Cantifla s- star. I do, I did. I, really I brushed did. it a bit with my <laughs> with my arm, and I was just like, Ah, Cantifla's got a fucking star. This is great. This is fantastic. Yeah. Um, yes. So he's like obviously the Charlie Chaplin of uh, of Mexico, and okay. he, he did cross over and stuff. Little Pepe, you know, he, he had to be that guy. Okay. Um, yeah. No, he no Was doctors it? or lawyers for Mexicans back in the day. No <laughs> yeah. roles like that. Yeah. But uh, but still, he was hilarious. Yeah. Very very funny. My favorite sketch is when he get when he learns how to fly a plane and he gets in as a student with this other guy who is also a student but thinks the other guy ah. is the instructor and then they take off and then halfway through they're like fuck we don't know how to land and it's it's so I'm sure it's still hilarious. <laughs> it, it's it's great. I'm glad. I explained the whole bit to you. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I'm just saying, like, Tito, and we're... we're oh, okay, so Hell here yeah. we go. Uh, it's okay. Saturday, June 8th. I think we're out of town. Is this, but is this, a, is this a, a competition? Looks like it. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, yeah. We must go to there. Yeah, we there. gotta get... Yeah, uh, man. I, think I think we're out of town that week. It's four hours long. That's it goes from 6.30 to 10.30. Yeah, but you really should start around noon. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to tailgate uh, uh, the mariachi yes. competition? Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what you do, and it goes on. No, it's fantastic. I love this kind of music. I never listen to it, of course, because, you know, you grow up with it, you know, and then you you don't listen to it because you grew up with it. Yeah, of course. But I love this stuff, so it was really, really good. Thank you. Yeah, and speaking of stuff that you grow up with that you don't really listen to, when I grow up, when I grew up, when I was growing up in Texas... Hated country. Couldn't stand it. There was the, that was the thing that the people I didn't like listened to, the people who called me names, they all listened to country. And it was just generally I wanted to get the fuck out of there, and country was the one thing that I just couldn't fucking stand. But since then, of course, as you know, I've gotten, I've gained a great appreciation for country music. I fucking love country music now. I also have gained a great appreciation for hip-hop through our Beastie Boys series. Mm-hmm. And I know a few years ago... Guys started to mix it with really fucking terrible results. Okay. Like country hip hop. Oh, country hip hop. Probably the worst music genre to to ever exist. Um, yeah. But I'm, okay, go ahead. But way back, 
I think probably the early 90s. Yeah. Someone tried to combine the two, and I think they may have succeeded a little bit. What? How? Hi, I'm Diane uh -oh. Horner, and welcome to Country wow. Hip Hop, the newest trend in country line dancing. We've seen this hip hop dancing all over the United States and Canada as we've been touring. Now let's meet our hip hop dancers. We have spotted the bison down the prairie. <laughs> TJ. Wait for Jamie. Uh. Susan. Jamie. <laughs> oh, wow. I think we're ready to go. Let's do some great hip hop dancing. One bill. Two steps, running man. Twist. Yeah. Running man. Twist. And if this uh, is scissors. country hip hop, why is it just Jump. shredding guitar? I'm so what confused. <laughs> what is it? Window washer. I know what they said it. Basketball. Big slide. Use that left. <laughs> That's jamming. My favorite part, it uses the running man. I and we'll be adding hip rolls to the running man. Uses. But first, let's practice the running man. This is the country version of the running man. Is there a country version of running man? That's no. the cowboy okay. hip hop. Her pronunciation of running man is cowboy ridiculous. Hip -hop. <laughs> that cowboy man just disappeared. The cowboy hip hop. The cowboy hip hop. The, cowboy hip -hop. <laughs> the entire cowboy hip hop. Let's do it twice more. Cowboy hip hop. This okay. is cowboy hip hop. Uh. I I just, just, now it. you know the cowboy hip hop. You're ready to try the hip hop. Ready? Go. Out. In. Out. In. Out. That's Charleston. Chug. <laughs> you can even add your shoulders if you want. That's the fun thing about hip hop dancing. Is it? <laughs> the vaudeville. And a variation they on the did Roger a record Rabbit. scratch. Moving back. One. That was it. And sliding forward. Could this get a little more hip hop? I, I guess they had to ease them into it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, as you get comfortable, start having fun with it. <laughs> I, um. Okay. See, I mean, this and is Jamie's step favorite. On both sides oh, of Jamie's the body will a little bit behind, though. <laughs> Oh, uh, looks great! This is Jamie. Jamie's also the only one who dressed for the, the, That's the it. part. Uh, they the all answered an ad <laughs> that morning. You know who it is. <sighs> my God. Okay. Uh, I might, seriously, my brain broke. I'm not sure. I think it was neither hip hop or country. It was nothing. It was not. <laughs> it was slop. It's like a lot of it it's was, like it was stomp. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> it's like you know when you mix a bunch of colors together uh, when you're making Easter eggs and you're a kid and they just all turn out to be brown or green, dark yeah. green yeah. or something. <laughs> that's Easter egg brown. Wow. Hey, Eesh. Kelly, I got a question for you. Yeah. Are these your drums? Oh, okay. Where? I'm playing along. Are th are these your drums? <laughs> are these yours? Oh, oh those are nice. I love those. I love those. These are drums. They're beautiful. These are drums. They're great. Very nice. Thank you. Are those yours or Reynolds? Reynolds. Beautiful drums. Are these your drums or Reynolds? Very nice. Are those, are those your drums or those Reynolds? Oh, they're beautiful. Reynolds? Beautiful. Are those yours? Nice. They're beautiful. Are those yours? They're gorgeous. Thank you very much. These are great. Are these yours? Very nice. Thank you very much. Boy, those are great. Are those yours or those rentals? <laughs> oh, those are very nice. These are beautiful. Are these your drums? Those are fantastic. Are those this your drums? <laughs> great. Cool. Okay. Nice drums. How are you? Good looking drums. Thank you very much. I love these. Nice job. These are beautiful drums, too, by the way. Nice job. <laughs> those are great. Those are beautiful. Yeah. Nice job. He's just nice job. Drums. Nice drums, I my friend. <laughs> How old are those? Yeah, cool. Uh, I think How he's just trying to avoid saying good job. 43, what, what sex are they? Good gig, love the drums. Are those your drums? <laughs> you see what I mean? Those are beautiful. You see what those I mean? Those are Reynolds, right? Those are yours. Well, those are Reynolds. They're still beautiful drums. Nice job on the Reynolds. Those are great drums. Okay. Nice cool. <laughs> as much off? as I can take. <laughs> All right. It's honestly as much as I can fucking take. I the man doesn't want to give one damn compliment <laughs> musically okay and that's fine 
Okay, that's cool and stuff, and he's hilarious and everything. And yes, he has had his moments, but god damn it. Just say great job. That yeah. was really nice. That these, sounded great. Hey, are these your drums? These are Reynolds. <laughs> you know what? Why hasn't one person said, like, no, they're not? No. They never and did. Then, <laughs> 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 they don't want to say. They're they embarrassed. Say. They want you to say, no, these are my drums. I brought these drums. Yeah. These are my drums. It's okay. Are you going to take them home? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. You can't Great. have them. Yeah. We're going to need someone to open the door for us, though, when we're leaving. And some then, help. And you continue that. You someone, can just, just continue that. Someone give me some fucking help. <laughs> when you're taking those drums in and out, those drums are really fucking heavy. You just can't say no one nice thing. No one ever wants to help the guy with the drums bring the drums in. Never I, wants to help him bring them out, either. I bet when Elvis Costello played, he said, Great. Great job. Yeah. Just to fuck with everyone else. <laughs> he always said great job to Tom Waits. You see? Because Tom Waits was his, one of his favorite uh, interviews. Oh. Tom Waits was on something like 15 times or something throughout the years. Wow. Yeah. Tom Waits. There's a whole compilation of Tom Waits' letters. That's right. We, interviews we did play that. that. Yeah. yeah. All right. So it's uh, the end of the show. It's time for Will You Do a Series oh. on? Will You Do This Thing? Let's see here. Gore. Oh. Man, someone's yes. asking all the time for gore, yes, gore. every time. Yeah. Definitely gore. Love to do gore. Yeah. And of course, we will be true to the lore. Yes. As if it's real. As if all of it's it real. Because it is. It is. Uh, Jane County, um, I don't know. We've talked about it. I think we've talked about Jane County as much as we're going to talk about Jane County. We have mentioned Jane County a lot throughout the, our... Yeah, we'll just continue to bring up Jane County. I don't know if it will like be a whole series, though. Jane that County, I don't believe. No. Jane County is a very good side character to the uh, to the scene, the New York yeah, City scene. Yeah, she's got some great stories. Yeah. And, and some of her songs... Actually, my the guy who cuts my hair uh, used to be roommates with her. Really? Uh, yeah. In Atlanta? Or uh, no, in New York? no, in New York. Wow. Like, yeah, like 20 years ago or something. Said, really nice. Really the, nice. Really good roommate, by the way. No, oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, uh, I've. Um um, I've had a couple of uh, her albums over the years, back when it was like Wayne County, or when the name was Wayne County. It's Jane uh, County now. Yeah. Uh, well, the name of the band was Wayne County and the Electric Chairs. Yes. Um, it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. Uh, you know Miles? I don't know you know Miles. Mm. Uh, Ghost? Got a confession to make. I don't really like Ghost that much. I don't. I don't think we'll get there. I'm yeah. sorry. I don't think we'll don't get think there. I know. Yeah. Ghost is Henry's thing. He loves ghosts. Yeah. Minutemen. Oh, Wendy Carlos. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We, yeah. We're yes. going to be talking about Wendy Carlos. We're going to mention Wendy Carlos. I don't know if there'll be a whole series or anything like all, but we are going to dedicate some time for sure. That or out. We'd mm-hmm. love to do the Minutemen one day. One day. Absolutely love to Eurovision songs. Um, Europe. Eurovision has a very interesting history. I don't know too much about it. I guess that's how I learn. Yeah. That's how you have to do it. They're like, you know, if you want to get, if you want to start a series, you just got to, I'll just jump head in. But I don't know. Will that work for us? Probably not. Okay. But it's an interesting idea. But thank you. Yes. Thank you for trying, though. Uh, Devo, we you know, we'd love to do Devo. They're just not, the, the sources just aren't there. Love Devo. Yeah. I want to do Devo. There is, I think someone wrote to us saying, like, I'm sorry you guys don't like Devo. And I was just about to be like, no, we love De- Are you kidding I me? This is a great story, great music, Devo. great characters. It's just not, and we don't have enough resources yeah. um, for that, books and stuff. I think there's documentary and then a coloring book. Like, we need a lot more than that. Yeah, we'd basically. Yeah have to like write a Devo book in order to make a Devo series. I don't have time for that. You don't have time for no. that. And uh, uh, Dungeon uh, Synth, yeah, and Swans, you know. I, I think I'm more, uh, I don't know, and Pink Floyd, what do you think? Pink you think Floyd. think out of all of those. Because uh, that's the thing, is that Pink Floyd's one of those um, bands that, you know, was it Roger Waters? Uh, just yeah. ruins, you know, certain bands <laughs> just ruin their legacy by being dickheads. Yeah. And Pink Floyd, unfortunately. Like, I would do, like, up till metal. Okay. Like maybe, yeah. yeah, or maybe like Sid Barrett era Pink Floyd Sid er- yeah, would be that was, like yeah, really fucking same thing. cool. Yeah. Okay. Like or maybe, but metal is my favorite Pink Floyd album. Okay. Um, and then maybe you know a little bit of Dark Side, and then after that you're like nah. nah, nah. But then if you do Dark Side, you get the wall. I love Dark Side. Maybe we could skip the wall. Maybe we could do that. Maybe we could skip the wall. Yeah. Nah, yeah. Maybe that. But yeah, maybe. Yeah, Pink Floyd, like Sid Barrett era Pink Floyd would be cool because I'm, I'm ready to get back in rock and roll, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, and that we will talk to you guys about that soon, though. Soon. soon. Yes. And tonight, thanks for the subs, Brownie Baker seventy two, the Modern Bard, the Modern Bard. That's very difficult to say. You know it's difficult to say. Slug Bucket, Mr. Shanks, and Zanza twenty three. And thank you, Holden, for rating us. Thank you for rating. 
right at the end of the show. Good job. Ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> All Bye, right, everybody. Guys. Well, we'll, guys, we'll see you next month, uh, the first Monday of the month. Yeah, first That's month. That's what we're doing. First Monday of every month at uh, 6 p.m. PST, 9 p.m. EST. And uh, don't forget to go and watch all the rest of the shows that we've done so far over on our YouTube, cha YouTube channel. <laughs> It's out there. <laughs> all right. So enjoy all your nuggets and your Spanish mariachi music. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys all come down from that yeah. beautifully. Come down nice. Go listen to more Garson's hair. Yeah. Hair. Goodbye. Goodbye.